Oh, I'm sick of filling up this tire. The uh, valve stem. He's junk. Been leaking a while. Actually, the other side leaks too, but only to a certain point. Which goes down to a certain pressure and then it just stays in there. So that side never goes flat, but... This side always does. So without having a uh, tire machine, uh, it's sort of difficult to uh, replace a valve stem because you have to break the bead on this one side so you can reach in there and uh, pluck it out, put a new one in. But when you don't have a tire machine that can break it, you got to go and you know go old school on it. Um, these tires are, I mean, they got nice tread, but they are just dry rotted to hell. And this is just a, uh, you know, this is just my little yard rig for plowing the driveway and stuff. But, um, so, you know, I don't feel like uh, taking it down to a shop and, you know, then they're going to, then I say I need a valve stem, then they're going to go, oh, your tire's junk, you need a new tire. And then I got to explain to them, and you can see where I'm going with that. That's just, just uh, very upsetting. So I'm not going to do that. Um, there's a few methods, you know, out there that uh, people have used, you know, to uh, break a bead. Uh, one that I've done before is put the put it under the hub of the vehicle let the jack down, let it let the vehicle on the tire actually and uh, sometimes you can break the bead like that but on something like this where this tire has been mounted on this wheel for many many years and uh, that's going to be just stuck right on there good so that's that that uh, that uh blah. That way there is not going to work. So I was watching, uh, I've watched some videos before on YouTube of uh, people using a um, floor jack and a ratchet strap. And uh, they, they have a method of doing it that, uh, I mean, it looks good on, on the video. But um, so... This is my first time doing it. It's an old school way of uh, breaking the bead. And uh, I watched a video. You could too. Maybe my video might help you if I succeed. But um, we're going to give it a shot. So you're just going to need a, you know, you're going to need a heavy duty, uh, you know, regular floor jack. Your little you know your little jacks that you keep in the trunk and stuff and it's not going to work for this you know um, something like this it's going to be what you need and uh... you're just going to need a simple ratchet strap I'm sure you got one of those laying around if not they're pretty cheap um, and then you're going to need one of these to take out your uh... valve core out of the valve stem to get all the air out. And of course, you're going to need a new valve stem if that's what you're aiming to do. Um, if you're looking to break the bead to get the tire off and go further with it, maybe, you know, maybe that's what you need to do. But all I need to do is break the bead on this one side. That way I can reach in there and uh, put my new valve stem in, which I have, I think, I have one. Oh yeah, there you are.
So you can see that that front axle of the jack right there, you know, has the wheels on both sides. Uh, there's a bar right there. You want to hook that first hook of your strap. It's going to go right on that, and it's going to come through the wheel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring that strap. We're going to come under the body of the jack. And we're going to come back. Your ratchet side, you're going to want to hook that. So the long side's hooked. Come around, we're going to come under the jack, we're going to come back over the tire, and we're going to come into the ratchet. Alright, we're finally on there. Alright, you don't want to go too tight. Just get it on there snug, you know. She's on there. Now, in theory, the way he did it, we should just be able to jack it up. It should break the bead. I hear a lot of noise. No. That bead's not off there yet. Maybe I got it too tight. it up a little.
Alright. We changed positions a little bit. This is, a, like I said, this thing is crusty. It's been on this thing for many years. If you had a, you know, the guy in the video, it's like a car was driven every day, it was aluminum wheel, blah, blah, blah. Probably a cleaner bead on it, I don't know. But, we spun it a little bit, ran these two straps through one hole, and in the video, he tightened it pretty good, so that's what we did. So we'll just jack it up again, see what happens. There we go. That's all it took. Drop out of there. Sometimes when you got a really old wheel and tire you know, even when you put it on the tire machine and you put the old bead breaker to it. Sometimes you got to spin it around a couple of times, you know, to get that sweet spot. So, in this case, we had to do the same thing. And, uh, we should be able to, hopefully, press this down enough, get that valve stem out sneak the other one in and then uh, fill her back up So I'm just going to use a pry bar, sort of get this out of the way, just tie it down there. This one, this valve stem is pretty hurt and should just tear right off. Oh yeah, see, that was nothing. I got this old uh, snaggle tooth thing. My new friend Dan with the purple truck I was friends with for a short time. He, I let him uh, use my tools in my garage, gave him a battery to get his truck going so he could go to work. And uh, he left us here, but. He took off and uh, I never seen him again. 
pretty weird, huh? I saw the truck pop up for sale on Marketplace, but never seen the guy again. Never answered another message or a text. There's the other piece. Yep. My new friend. Had a lot of plans. Had a lot of things we were going to do. got one one valve stem to make this work here if we don't get it right that's it we're done done for the day so you might have a fancy valve stem installer tool so that you don't tear it but I don't I'm gonna do it these dikes a little dangerous way Now, I got to get this in there without losing it. Now we'll just gently I said gently grab this Pull it through. It's not quite in there yet. It's halfway. Oh, there she goes. She just popped. Popped right in. There it is. Old Dan said he had this tool for years. You can see the old snaggle tooth got him out of a lot of jams. I ended up with it. My only memory of my my friend and my deep cycle high cycling battery that I put in his truck so he could just start it and get to work. Oh well. Still there? You're still there. <clears throat> Woo! She popped right on there. Snappy snap. You know how nice this is going to be? Don't have to fill the tire up. No leak.
So as I got excited about my tire that's uh, fixed that I didn't have to pay for and uh, every time I would go out to snow I'd have to fill it up so that's going to be nice but then I was noticing that my plow frame looked a little little wonky you can see see this this light here is further up it seems as if the whole plow frame has twisted a little bit and I thought something had broke but I couldn't really find anything noticed that the side of this bumper was out more than the other but then I got looking under here Woo! look at that whole frames broken boys so uh, yeah we're just uh, we're given upper control arm hooks right there and she's just uh he's rotten <laughs> axle boot torn that's gotta be nice so there you go seems as if She's just giving her all the way. Whole plow frame is hooked to the frame of the vehicle right there. Seems as if it's starting to give body mount. No, no body mount. <coughs> Back here, it's not too bad. The light always falls. There is just nothing there, boys. That is about to snap right there. And of course, you've already seen the rear. There's nothing back there. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Looks like I was ramming too much. I'll even put the valve cap on for you. I know you were just going crazy with that. One snapped off. 
Somebody snapped her. Put the chrome cap on. You ain't never coming back. Got your last light here. That's it. It's the last one. The curse is over. It's got a little slush on top. There it comes. There you go. There's a good sign off for you. Now you know I got plenty of high life inside. But just out of principle we had to get rid of these lights. Um, I got a 30, if you didn't hear the story about the Miller Light, well I hate it, I hate the taste. But, uh, my birthday, October 1st, I got a 30 pack. I was asked, uh, bringing you over a birthday gift. Well, I wasn't asked that, I was told that, I guess. Um, so, they asked, um, what's your, you know, what, what, what's your flavor? You know, what do you want? Miller High Life. That's what I drink. They don't have it too many places up here. It's kind of a odd thing to find. You got to kind of look around, but. Oh, no, they got that everywhere, they said. Oh, I can get it anywhere. Oh, okay. Slush crap. That tastes like fish tank water. That's what that Miller Light tastes like to me. Not that I've ever tasted it, but I can imagine what fish tank water would taste like. So they said, "Oh, I'll leave it on the step." I'm just going by. Perfect. Go out on the steps of the 30 pack of Miller Lite. Big difference. What are you going to do? Can't be ungrateful. You know. Someone gets you a gift.
you accept it. At first, I, I admit I tried giving it away, but couldn't couldn't give it away. It's kind of weird somebody just to accept a thirty pack for free, and uh, so I brought it in the garage. And like I said, that was October first was my birthday. We are now February eleventh. 2021 we have entered a new year and there was still one in the fridge anyway tell me what you think about the Raider I mean I don't really have a choice I guess uh, keep plowing until it just completely snaps right apart right I mean What's the worst that can happen? Would you just get rid of it now? Just be done with it? Maybe. Maybe some would. Some probably would have got rid of it a long time ago. But. You know, I got to keep it going. You know, because I make so much money with it. Huh. Yeah. But. So, we broke the bead on a tire, replaced the valve stem, no tire machine, and uh, we just did it with a floor jack and a ratchet strap. Um, I would recommend doing it if you really are in a jam and you need to do that. Um, you know, because once you bring that to a shop, they're going to charge you to uh they're gonna take the tire right off you know and they're gonna clean the wheel and they're gonna tell you the tires junk try to get you to buy another one then they're gonna tell you the wheels junk try to get to buy a new one of those and then when you tell them about your truck they're gonna tell you that's junk too but they're not gonna use the valve stem you bring them they're gonna charge you for the one they got and theirs is way better more expensive then, once they do all that, melt that tire on, they're going to want to balance it. We don't want it balanced. This is a yard. This is a yard plow. The wheel weight fell off over there. It's on the floor. I can see it. So, I would recommend... If you need to do it on your own vehicle, do that. But don't do that for anyone else. No, don't offer that because you're gonna wanna. Somebody else say, "Oh, I can't get to the tire. I don't want to bring this to the tire shop." But yeah, no. Tell them, "Nah, I don't have a tire machine." Because uh, doesn't get you anywhere, but not going to get into that. So now we got tire. It's not going to go flat. Be able to just go out, start it up, plow the driveway. And, uh, that's it. I knew you'd appreciate that one.
never know. Keep an eye out. Could see me on the streets.